thank you for all the ways you're moving. Thank you for all the ways you're blessing right now. Thank you for all the ways you're touching every fellowship member right now, live or archive, wherever they are in the world, Lord. We feel your love. We feel your peace. We feel your joy. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we just say thank you right now. Thank you. We rest in you, Lord. We rest in you. We cast all our care on you. For you care for each one of us, Lord. We just say thank you. Rest. Rest. Let his glory fill your place wherever you are, dear night. Let his glory fill your space wherever you are. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. Whatever's heavy on your heart right now, whatever's heavy on your mind, give it to him right now. Every Thursday, every Thursday we make it, we make it give it to the Lord day, even though we should give it to him every day. Every Thursday on fellowship is give it to the Lord day. Whatever you're holding on to, whatever you need to give it to the Lord, stop worrying. Stop. Thank you, Lord. No fear. Give it to the Lord right now. In your face, devil. In your face. Give it to the Lord right now. Give the Lord every worry, every stress, every anxiety. Give it to him right now. Give it to him right now. And let it go. Lay it on the altar right now and let it go. You must commit to yourself. You must commit to yourself to let it go. He's not going to make you do it. God is not going to make you give it to him. We got to, we got to let it go. His presence is right here. His presence is right here. Oh, Lord. I give it to you right now, Lord. I give it to you, Lord, right now. I give you every part of my life. I give you every one in my life. I give you every situation, every illness, every pain, every struggle, every attack. Whatever it is, Lord, whatever it is that's not like you, Lord, I'm giving it to you right now. I'm giving it to you right now. And I'm letting it go. I'm resting in you, Lord. I'm resting. Have no fear. Stand still. Have no fear. Stand still. Stand still. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed 
on you. Mind stayed on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, you are an awesome wonder. You're mighty. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
yes, Lord. Our soul says yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. You are the potter. We are the clay. Mold us, Lord. Mold us in what you need us to be today, Lord. Every day, have your way. Have your way in every way, Lord. As we humbly bow right now in your presence. We humbly bow and say, use me, Lord. Use me. As you see fit for the kingdom. And Lord, as we've left everything on the altar, Lord, we left everything on the altar. And now we trust you, Lord. We trust you with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding in all our ways. We acknowledge you, Lord, and you will direct our path. For you, Lord, are the burden mover, the yoke destroyer, the way maker, the miracle worker, the mountain mover, the great physician. You, Lord, are the strong tower in each of our lives, whose hand we never let go, Lord. We never, ever let go of your unchanging hand. The same yesterday, today, forevermore. You are the air we breathe. As a deer panteth for the water, so our soul longs after you, Lord, every day. Thank you, Jesus. We inhale the breath of life. Exhale the word of God. I do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Inhale the breath of life. Exhale the word of God. And now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. Inhale the breath of life. Exhale the word of God. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, let's sing it together. Father God, thank you. You save me. All the hurt and pain. You save me. So I can live again. I thank you, Lord. All you want me to do. Oh, Lord, I'm in love with you. Oh, say it again. You save me. All the hurt and pain. You save me. So I can live again. Thank you, Lord. All you brought me through. Oh, Lord, I'm in love with you. You saved me, Lord. You saved me from all the hurt and pain. You saved me so I can live again. I thank you, Lord, for all, all you brought me through. Oh, Lord, I'm in love with you. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where could we have been right now? That's a reason to shout every day. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, what could have been? Where could we have been? What could have happened? What could have taken us out years ago? Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's a reason to shout every single day. The fact that he woke us up this morning. The gift of life every day. 
we don't take it for granted. So many people who thought they were going to wake up this morning, but they didn't. They thought they were going to see another day. But yesterday was the last day. Yet he woke us up. We say thank you right now, Lord. Thank you for waking us up this morning to be a blessing to at least one person every day, Lord, to let our light shine through you, through us, to let your light shine through us to others, Lord, to whoever you guide us to, to whoever you ask us to pray for, for whoever we pray in accessory prayer for, whoever it is, Lord, we just, we just say, have your way, Lord. That's why we say, have your way, to use us as you see fit for the kingdom. To seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things in the world will be added if we seek ye first. That's always the key. That's always the key. Thank you, Jesus. Always the key to keep our mind stayed on Jesus. 24-7, 24-7, mind stayed on him. Thank you, Jesus. Today's lesson, focus on the simplicity in God. Focus on the simplicity in God. In order to understand that title, we must go through Psalm 139, and then I'll explain it further. I'm reading for the New American Standard, the New American Standard Bible. Keep your hand also in 103, beginning now. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You understand my thought from afar. You scrutinize my path and my lying down and are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain to it. Where can I go from your, your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in show, behold, behold, you are there. If I take wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there, your hand will lead me and your hand, your right hand will lay hold of me. If I say, surely the darkness will overwhelm me and the light around me will be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are alike to you. For you formed my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in your book were all written the days they were obtained for me. When as yet none of them were, when as yet there was not one of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would outnumber the sand. And when I wake, I am still with you. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. 
Depart from me, therefore, men of bloodshed, for they speak against you wickedly, and your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? Do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with the utmost hatred. They have become my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there be any hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. Then turn to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not, none, forget none of his benefits. Who pardons all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion? Who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle? The Lord performs righteous deeds and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the son of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward those who, who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He is mindful that we are but dust. For the days, for, for, as for man, his days are like grass, as a flower of the field. So he flourishes. When the wind has passed over it, it is no more. And his place acknowledges it no longer. But the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to chosen children, to those who keep his covenant and remember his precepts to do them. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his sovereignty rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, mighty in strength, who perform his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you who serve him, doing his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen, family. Praise God. Praise God. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Those two, those two right there are so important because in order for us to be able to, to be able to rest in the Lord, sometimes we have to remind ourselves the awesomeness of God. We have to remind ourselves when we say greater is he who is in me, sometimes when we read scriptures like 139, 103, 119, 121, there's a bunch of them. Psalm 91, we have to remind ourselves how big God is because, because right now in this world, <clears throat> as we say, we say all the time, the chaos going on right now in this world is so overwhelming 
that if you don't stay connected to his awesomeness, the peace of God, to, to, you'll let the world overtake you. The world will overtake you if you don't keep your mind stayed on him. Your mind stayed on him. Perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Isaiah 26, 3. We have to make that a daily, a daily, a daily focus. We must make that a daily focus to keep our mind stayed on him. No matter what it is, keep our mind stayed on him through adversity, through the pain, through infirmities, through challenges, through attacks. Keep your mind stayed on him. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. And our title today, Focus on the Simplicity of God. Trust him. Focus on the simplicity of God. Trust him. Now I could end the, I could end the sermon right there. I could end the sermon right there. What's the simplicity of God? Trust him. But we got we have to be in control. The main problem why we cannot focus on the simplicity of God is because we want to be in control. We cannot be in control. Trust God and let it go. We cannot control things that are out of our control. So trust him. If you believe I can do all things through Christ, trust him. If you believe greater is he who is in me than he was in the world, trust him. That's 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he who is in me than he was in the world. 1 John 4, 4. And Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, we got to focus on the word to keep your mind stayed on him. You can't just look at the world. You got to speak the word of God. When you speak it, faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Speak it out loud. You hear your own voice. You hear your own voice. Speak the word of God. And the word of God comes out your mouth into your ear. And now you're encouraging yourself. When you encourage yourself in the Lord, that means you're speaking the word of God. And you hear your own word. The fellowship might not be around. This is John and myself. A pastor might not be around. So when you speak the word of God out loud, you are encouraging yourself in the Lord. Because you are hearing the word of God out of your own mouth. It, is a, it doesn't say faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of, from the man of God's mouth. It doesn't say, uh, it doesn't say uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing from a prayer warrior. No, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you hear the word of God, whether I say it, since John says it, a prayer warrior says it, a pastor says it, you say it. As long as you hear the word of God going back into your ear, it empowers you. So if there's no one else around, if there's no one else around, the word of God is what saves you because there's power in the word of God. Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4, you got to speak the word, speak it. Whenever you have to, whenever, whenever you're going through anything, whenever you're going through anything that's stealing your joy, anything that's stealing your joy, anything that's stealing your peace of mind, anything that's trying to take your, your joy and your spirits down, speak the word of God. Speak the word of God over it. That's what Matthew 4, 4 is talking about. We can't live in this world by ourselves. We have to speak the word of God to be able to walk in victory, to be able to walk in strength, to be able to be empowered. Because the word of God is what gives us the power. Not man. Man doesn't give you power. The word of God is where the power is. The word of God is where peace is. And when we, when we, get, we get caught up in the world, and now it gets complicated. What's making it complicated is we can't control things we are not in control of. Let me say it again. What makes it complicated is not the word of God. What makes it complicated is we keep trying to, uh, we, we want to control things we cannot control. It's out of our hand. It's out of our hands. So now what? Give it to the Lord. When it's out of your hands, give it to the Lord and trust him. That's why I read 139 and 103. You see how big God is. To remind yourself how big God is when you say, 
greater is he. You see me? How big is God? Look at 139, 103, 119, 91. I can, I can name them all. Whenever you feel the world overwhelming you, respond with the word of God. Let me say it again. Whenever it feels like the world is caving in, our response, our response is the word of God. The simplicity of God is the power, the power in the word. That's the simplicity. Speak the word. Don't stress. Speak the word. No fear. Speak the word. Anxiety. Speak the word. Devastation. Speak the word. Infirmity. Speak the word. I don't care what you're going through. Speak the word. That's the answer to every problem. Speak the word of God is the answer to every problem. It's not like God. So we have to, from time to time, remember. And, and, and of course, the text for the day, the, the text for the day, Isaiah 55, I say it all the time. The text for today's lesson, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For God's thoughts are above our thoughts. His ways are above our ways. As high as the heavens are above the earth, his ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. So when you can't figure things out, God knows. He already knows the answer. You can't figure out which way to go. God already knows. You don't know how to answer a problem. God already knows. But are you calling him? Are you calling him? Or are you trying to figure it out yourself? You can't figure it out yourself. Some things you cannot figure out by yourself. You need God to show you. God already knows the answer. He's just waiting for you. Jeremiah 33, 3. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call on me. Call on me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you don't know. So the answer, the answer, the answer, you have no idea. You don't know that you got a question. You, you're trying to figure something out and you have no answers. You, you have no answers, but God does. But are you calling him so he can show you the answers you don't know? <laughs> Let me say it again. You're looking for answers right now. You are looking for answers right now. But are you calling him so he can show you the answers that you don't know? <laughs> I love that. I love it. He's got the answers. He's got the answers waiting for you to call him and give it to you. But you're trying to figure it out by yourself. You keep trying to figure out by yourself. That's that's our problem. Our problem is our problem as human beings is being in control. Our, our main enemy, our main enemy is trying to be in control. Of something we can't control. And when you can't control it, give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord and what? Trust. Give it to the Lord and trust. Say, say with me. Give it to the Lord and trust. Let's say it again. Give it to the Lord and trust. You can't just give it to the Lord. You give it to the Lord and then trust. If you give it to the Lord and don't trust, you still stressed out. Because it's trust that brings peace. Yeah, you can give it to the Lord, and, and but you don't trust Him, and now you're still stressed out. You're still freaking out. You still got and you still got anxiety attacks. You still got panic attacks. No, give it to the Lord, and then trust Him. We got to do both in order to feel peace of mind. You got to give it to Him, and then trust Him. Give it to Him, let go, trust. Give it to Him. Let go, trust. Give it to him. Let go, trust. Peace. 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 Give it to him. Say, y'all be say, say it with me, y'all. Say it with me. Give it to him. Let go, trust. Peace of mind. Give it to him. Let go, trust, peace of mind. If you don't have peace of mind, you didn't let go. See, you got to give it to him. You got to let go. And then most importantly, you got to trust him. And then there's peace. If you don't do all three steps, you don't have peace. That's how you know. If you're not at peace, you missed a step. You gave it to him. Did you let go? Did you let go? If you let go, trust. You got to give it to him. Give it to him. You gave it to him. Did you give it to him earlier? 
We laid on the altar. Earlier, we said lay it on the altar. Did you lay it on the altar? Or did you wait? No, I can, I can figure this out. I can figure it No, you lay it on the altar. Don't be prideful. Don't be prideful. Give it to the Lord. If you need help, give it to him. You can't do it by yourself. Lord, I need you. Lay it on the altar. I give it to you, Lord. I need you. Here it is. I need you, Lord. Now, Lord, I give it to you, Lord. I lay it on the altar. Now, I let go. I let go. I let you have it, Lord. I let you have this problem. I let you have this struggle. Now, now, I trust you, Lord, with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. And I just worship you. I praise you. Now, peace of mind. Peace of mind. But got it. Give it to him. Let go. Trust. Because when you trust, then you rest. When you trust, you rest. If you don't trust, you're in anxiety still. If you don't trust, you're feeding anxiety. No, trust is the most important step. You lay it on the altar. You let it go. And now God's got it. You let go. You let go. God's got it. Oh, God's got it. I trust you, Lord. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's, a, that's right. That we look not, things are seen. We look not, 2 Corinthians 4, 18. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. We look not at things are seen, but things are unseen. But things that are seen are temporary. Things that are unseen are eternal. We walk by faith, not by sight. Fear is sight. Faith is no fear. Fear is sight. Faith is no fear. Walk by faith, not by sight. Sight, sight, fear. Faith, peace. Let me say it again. Sight, fear, faith, peace. Walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by faith, not by sight. Cause sight, fear, anxiety, insomnia, stress attacks, panic attacks, heart attacks, ulcers, insight, insight. No, peace. I want the peace of God. I got to have the peace of God. He says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Say it with me. Be anxious for nothing. Nothing. Nothing includes everything. Be anxious for nothing. Period. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything. Let's turn to that. Turn to Philippians 4, 6. Turn to Philippians. Philippians. Philippians 4, 6, 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which, suppress, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your mind, your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. It will guard your heart and your mind. When you're stressed out, your, your mind and your heart are not at peace. But you got you to gotta talk to the Lord. You got to talk to the Lord and let it go. Give it to the Lord. Let go. And trust. Lord, I give it to you. And what do you do when you, what do you do when you give it to the Lord? Lord, I need you right now, Lord. I don't have any answers, Lord. Lord, I don't know what I'm doing, Lord. I don't see any answers. I see no doors opening. Lord, Lord, I see nothing right now, Lord. I see nothing right now. I'm giving you, Lord. I'm giving you, Lord, my fear. Lord, I'm giving you my fear, my anxiety, my worry, my stress, my anxiety. I let it go, Lord. I give it to you, Lord. Lay it on altar. I give it to you, Lord. I let it go, Lord. I let it go because great is he who is in me, who is in the world. I give it to you, Lord. I let it go. And now I trust you, Lord, with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. I let go because I can do all things through Christ. See, you see how the word of God, you see how the word of God empowers you? You got to speak the word of God over the situation. I just, I gave you an example just now of how you, in, you infuse the word of God in your prayer. Lord, I need you right now. I need you right now. You, you said, cast all my care on you for you care for me, Lord. I let go, Lord. I let go because great is he who is in me, who is in the world. And then I let go. Lord, I trust you, Lord, because I trust you with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. So you infuse the word into your prayer. You say your prayer and include the word because the word is what gives your prayer power. So you speak the word to support your prayer. And then, of course, and you seal it in the name of Jesus, I pray. Signs still delivered in the name of Jesus, I pray. 
Amen. <laughs> now, now the prayer is signed, still delivered, and now you wait. Here comes the hardest part. Here comes the hardest part. Wait on the Lord. You just laid, you just, you just gave it to him. You let go. And now you trust him. And now, now the hard part, wait. <laughs> Woo! So, so, somebody so, give, give, give me a hand up. Woo! Wait on the Lord is not easy. Somebody give me a give me a woo. Woo! Wait on the Lord. Help me, somebody. Help me, somebody. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. We got to wait on the Lord. He already knows those, Isaiah 40, 31, those who wait on the Lord gain strength. You gain strength when you wait. When you're impatient, you get weaker. The word says it. When you wait on the Lord, you gain strength because you trust him. The trust gives you strength. When you don't trust, when you don't trust, you get worried and you get fearful because you're not trusting. But when you wait on the Lord, oh, Lord, I got this, Lord. God's got this now. I can't wait. I can't wait for God to move. I can't wait for God to heal. I can't wait for God to turn my life around. I just can't wait. And I get praise every day. I start shouting every day. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, thank you for my deliverance. Thank you for my breakthrough. I see me in the future. And I look much better because God is moving. God has moved my life. Thank you, Jesus. You get happy about it. You get happy about it. You say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You just let it go. You let it go and let God because God did not create a spirit of fear, but love, power, sound mind, no fear, love, power, sound mind, no fear, love, power, sound mind, no fear, love, power, sound mind. That's what we focus on. We don't focus on fear. We focus on God's love. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the blood of Jesus. Sound mind. Keep your mind stayed on him. The simplicity of God, the simplicity of God is using the word of God, period. That's what this title is about. The simplicity of God is just using the word of God, speaking the word of God, holding on to the word of God, trust the word of God, live the word of God, apply the word of God. That's the key to simplicity. Just do the word, period. Just do the word. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. So everything we need in this world to be, everything we need to be victorious in this world is in the basic instructions before leaving earth. <laughs> because, because once we leave the earth, God's got us for sure. Once we leave the earth, God's got us. Hey, no need to worry. No need to worry. No need to fear. Jesus Christ is always here. So that's why that's why we give it to him. That's why we let it go. That's why old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. Old things must pass away because you got to let it go. If you don't let it go, old things will never pass away. If you don't let it go, I say it all the time. But a part of the the part of the simplicity, what makes it complicated? The devil makes it complicated. And then we make it complicated. Sometimes the devil's up, sometimes the devil's on vacation, and our own mind is our enemy. Tr lean not to your own understanding. Lean not to your own understanding. This right here is sometimes your enemy. Not the devil. Devil, devil's on across the town. Devil's on devil's over there trying to attack somebody. You going through struggle because your own mind, your own mind is trying to do God's work. Woo, let me say that. When you lean to your own understanding, you're trying to do God's job. God says, trust me, lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. But if you're not lean, if you're leaning to your own, own mind, that's bothering you. That's keeping you from trusting because you're trying to figure it out. You got to trust God. You see the way out. Trust. Amen. Now, one of the things... I found a, a, a thing that, that I found the other day. I, I mentioned this to you guys uh, uh, last week. I meant to look, at, look it up for you. I meant to look it up for you so I could share it with you. I, I was, I'm always in awe how science tries to explain God. It, it just cracks me up how science tries their best to explain God. God cannot be explained. God, I, I, don't care what, I don't care what inventions come up. 
God cannot be explained because he's so far above explanation. Yet I, I just love it to, to watch things when people try to say uh, they can figure out how, how God, they, they, they make an artificial heart and think they figure out how God made a heart. Yeah, but let me like, okay, they made an artificial heart, a pacemaker. Let's say the artificial heart. Now, I looked up a statistic. Now, the heart, the heart that God gives us, Okay, now let, 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 let math, a little math for you right here. The heart that God gives us roughly beats, let's see, what it is. By the age 70, by the age of 70, your heart has beaten 2 billion beats. Your heart, your, the heart that God made, the heart that God made, the, the heart that man makes, you got to go have that bad boy restored. You got to have that boy, bad boy rebuilt in a few years. You got to go back and make sure it's still running. But the heart that God gives us has whatever number of beats he wants us to have. But but for the average, though, it's two billion beats. Your heart's beating asleep. Your heart's beating awake. Your heart's beating, your heart's beating constantly. See, you're we, trying to put God in the, in the, into an example. This is when you realize how big God is. When you realize how big God is, then you understand greater is he who is in me than he was in the world. That's why you can do all things through Christ. Because he got so many answers. He's got miracles. He got provision. He's got he's I am the I am. Jehovah Jireh, Rapha, M. Kedish. I'm all the way, I'm a healer, I'm a banner, I'm your victory, I'm your whatever it is you need. I am whatever you need. That's how big he is. Whatever it is you need, God is. Whatever it is you need, God is. I am that I am. I am what? I am whatever you need me to be. Now, now the one that the one that I used before, <laughs> I gave an example a few a few months ago, but I want to actually give you the exactly the, the statistical numbers so we understand the bigness of God. Now, <laughs> now I told you before. I love I love the stars. I love astronomy. I thought I was gonna be an astronomer when I was a kid, <laughs> until I learned astronomy is also math. So I, it changed my future. But that's not the point. The reason I'm telling this example is I want you to understand how big God is. Now, we we live in a galaxy called the Milky Way. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy. Now I told you that before. The Milky Way has has billions of stars in it. The mil our Milky our galaxy has a billion stars in it. That our one galaxy. Now, through the telescope they've created, they've created on Earth, they've discovered, now get this, they've discovered 100, they've discovered 100, excuse me, 1 billion, maybe 2 billion galaxies. Now, I want you to wrap your, I want you to wrap your mind around this. The galaxy we live in, the galaxy we live in, if you could move at the speed of light, it would take a hundred years to go across our one galaxy. Yet they've discovered there could be over one billion galaxies. Now, I want you to think of the size of God. God is outside of that. God created the universe. So in between each galaxy, a galaxy, galaxy, there's billions of miles between the galaxies. So each galaxy is beyond comprehension and then the distance between 1 billion galaxies is phenomenal so, and then God is bigger than that because God created it so we say God is greater than time God created time you can't you can't time God God created time you can't put God on a timer because he's he created time he's outside of time that's why his time is always on time. His time is always on time. We go by our clock. He goes by his clock. His clock and our clock are not the same clock. His clock, his clock and our clock are not the same clock. And that's what gets us in trouble. We want God to move when we want to move. God doesn't move when we want to move. He moves when he knows we need to move. See, we want, we want microwave. We want, I want it now. I want it now. I want it now. No, God knows when you need it. He, oh, 
now you need it, blessing. Oh, now you need it, miracle. Oh, now you need it, healing. So just like, <laughs> amen, John, just like his ways are above our ways, his clock is above our clock. His clock is above our clock, just like his ways are above our ways. So we cannot even comprehend this. And this is what gives us trouble. Now, now the closing thought I want to give you right quick. The, the other day, I've been reading, uh, we, we talk about revelations all week. Uh, but what really, what really gets me when people try to control is people always ask me, where do where does your body go when you die? Now, now I'm not. I did a lesson about this uh, two years ago. I did a lesson, but I just need to. I just need to make this point. One one of the commentaries, in, in order to understand God, the reason I gave you one thirty nine and one hundred three, the reason I gave you about the universe, the reason I gave you about the heartbeats. If you can't even picture God doing that, you cannot un even begin to understand what could God do beyond our understanding because we can't even understand the things that he has done so we just have to you know what i'm just gonna trust god when, when it's my time where my body goes i end up with the lord i'm gonna be right on time see people get caught up again people get caught up again but 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 if the dead rise first if the dead rise first where where are we where are we until the dead rise first a lot of people ask me that well the, well the bible says uh, to be absent the body is to be with the lord People, we gotta stop. We gotta stop misquoting that scripture. We got to stop misquoting. People keep saying, "Well, you know, you know, to be absent of the body is to be with the Lord." Now, the scripture is, "I would rather be not of the body and be with the Lord." That's what the actual scripture is. That scripture is, uh, look at second. Write. I'm not gonna go to it, but Deanne, uh, write it down. Look at Second Corinthians five eighteen. Second Corinthians five eighteen. He says, "I would rather." be not of the body and be with the Lord. But people keep, we keep saying, well, you know, you know, to be out of the body is be with the Lord. And then when people say, and the dead shall rise first, wait a minute, dead rise first, but I thought we are with the Lord. Wait, what do you mean dead shall rise first? And, and the dead shall rise first. Well, when revelations comes and judgment day comes, the dead shall rise to be judged. So where are we? Where are we between that time? That's, that's the universal question. But my point is, in the simplicity of God, if you know, if you know, and you know that you know, where are you going? If you got your salvation attack, all these theories are coming up. Where the body is going until judgment day? Where is the body? You got all kinds of theories. But the point is, if you know where you're going, whatever theory it is, I know where I'm going to be when I wake up. Because remember, the Bible says, those who are asleep. We're not dead. We're asleep. Now we know the body, the body is decayed. So that means for those who are asleep shall be awakened. That means somehow our spirit is going to be asleep somewhere. And I'm not even worried about where. It's because I know where I'm going. So that means when I wake up, it's going to be going, it's going to be going to heaven time. Because I know my my name is in the book of life. Because I got myself, I got my salvation. If you got your salvation, you already know your name is in the book of life, which means you're going to heaven. If your name is not in the book of life and, you, and you're about to die, maybe I better get things right because I want to be in the book of life. But if you're going, you, you're going down hard times and you don't believe, you don't follow Christ, you don't speak the word, you never pray, you follow the devil, and, you, and, you, and guess what? Guess what you're going to be sleeping and waiting for? You know judgment day is coming, but the word already tells us. The word already says, those in the book of life, Go to heaven. If your name is not in the book of life, you go into the lake of fire with the devil and the antichrist and the beast if your name is not in the book of life. So don't even get caught up trying to figure out where my body going. Is it is, is am I still in the ground? Am I in am I in a state of limbo? Am I state of where am I? Where am I? Don't worry about it. If you if you died, he puts you spiritually to sleep until the time comes. To be raised and judged. The dead shall rise first. Wherever you are, wherever you are, you already got your salvation. So whenever it's time to wake up, you know your name is in the book of life. And those who don't know and not don't believe, they also know where they're going. 
but they got something to worry about because they're not going to the same place if your name is not in the book of life. And that's why we sing it every day. The reason we sing every day, don't wait too late to find Jesus. Do it now. Do it now. Get it out of the way. Get it out of the way. So whenever Jesus comes, you know where you're going. If you died right now while listening to fellowship and you got your salvation intact, you know where you're going. Praise God. Well, I'm going to sleep whenever. I'm going to be where he is. Whatever time is, Lord, I know I'm with you. Now, now, in a way, that still means if you're not in the body, if you're not in the body, you're with the Lord. Even if he puts you to sleep until the dead shall rise first, you still are with him. So I'm trying to make, I make sure we understand when people get confused about those two verses. First, they misquote the first verse. And then they get worried about when, where, how, what. Even my explanation can be beyond comprehension. Because if you can't believe that God created man from, a, from, uh, from dust, if you can't believe Eve was created from Adam, if you can't believe he parted the Red Sea, if you can't believe he brought water from a rock, you can't even believe anything we're talking about right now. His ways are above our ways. So when you try to get complicated, it's too complicated. Simple. He's God. The answer is, he's God. Period. What's the answer? God's got this. He's God. I trust him. I gave it to him. I let go. I trust him. Period. I gave it to him. I let go. I trust him. I gave it to him. I let go. I trust him. I let go. I trust it. I let go. You see, this is a commitment. This is a commitment because God's not going to make you do it. He already gave you. The, he gave us everything. The word of God. We. We. Point, everybody point, point to yourself. Me. Point to yourself. I must commit. Everybody point to yourself. I must commit. I must commit. And that's, I know sometimes it's hard to do. I must commit. See, God has given us, God has given us all the answers. We must commit. We must commit. We must commit. We must commit. Period. Everybody's going through something. And believe me, everybody's going through something. Everybody has some kind of fear. Uh, give, me, uh, give me a thumbs up. Everybody has some kind of fear. Everybody has some kind of fear. Nobody's alone. Nobody's alone. Everybody has some kind of fear. And all of us, this lesson is for all of us. This lesson is for all of us. God is the answer to every fear. 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 Praise God. See, we, we know, we understand. We understand. It's all, it's all about our focus. It's all about our focus. God's got this. Because sometimes, like I said before, sometimes is a test. A testimony, a testimony is in progress. A testimony is in progress. We you know after the test, after the test is going to be a testimony. After, after he has, wait, 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 after he has tested me, after he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. Job 23.10. Write that down. Job 23.10. After he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. Be bad. After he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. You don't become a diamond without pressure. There is no diamond. There is no diamond without pressure. Coal turns to a diamond, but pressure is what turns the coal to diamond. You're, you might be in pressure right now. A coal, diamond, in between. Pressure, pressure turns the coal to diamond. So right now you might be a piece of coal. You might be in a piece of coal and you're going through pressure right now. But guess what? You about to turn into a diamond. You about to turn into a diamond. Excuse me, excuse me. You about to turn into a diamond because pressure is what turns coal into a diamond. And after he has tested me, whoo, 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 I shall come forth as gold in your face, devil. <laughs> Help me, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. 
Get me excited. Whew. So, yeah, go on, devil. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, devil. Come on, yeah. What you got, devil? What you got? What you got? Because I got the authority. Yeah, knock me down. Guess what? Through Christ, I get back up. Yeah, knock me down, devil. Guess what? I get right, right, I get right back up. Knock me down, devil. Yeah, guess what? Through Christ, I can do all things. Knock me down, devil. Yes, what? Well, I get back up. We fall down, but we get up because a saint is just a sinner who fell down but got up. And the reason we get up is because God gives us the strength to get up. I don't care what you get knocked over. I don't care what you get knocked over with. When you got Jesus, he gives you the strength to make it. That's why you stay connected. Jesus gives you the strength. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? Who strengthens me? That's what I got right here. I got to do it. Who thrives? <laughs> That's what we're doing. I can do all things through Christ. He's the one who gives us the strength. It may be hard. It may be hard. It may be scary. It, it, but it, it may be frustrating. But guess what? If you stay connected, he's the one who's going to make sure you make it through the storm. You will make it through the storm. Every time I walk, talk, pray, say with Jesus, it's going to be all right. Walk, talk, pray, say with Jesus, it's going to be all right. Walk, talk, pray, say with Jesus, it's going to be all right. We sing it every day. We sing it every day. Every time I walk, talk, pray, say with Jesus, it's going to be all right. But are we walking? Are we talking? Are we praying? Are we saying? That's the key. That's the question. That's the question. Are you, are you walking, talking, praying, and saying with Jesus, it's going to be all right. If you're not walking, talking, praying, saying, guess what? You're not believing. If you're not walking, talking, praying, saying, you're not trusting. That's the answer. It's not easy. It's not easy, but it's a commitment. It's a commitment. A commitment. We must do our best. Nobody's perfect. Nobody, nobody's perfect. It's a commitment we all must make because we're all under attack every day. It's a commitment we all must make because we're all under attack every day. And don't get caught up in comp don't get caught up in, in complex thinking. Just trust God. Period. Trust God. But God. My God, trust God, but God, trust God, but God, but God is the answer. Live it, living by the word, living by the word is doing it every day, amen? And that's where I close. The simplicity of God, the simplicity of God is just trusting him, believing him, and waiting, trusting, believing, waiting. Trust him, believing, waiting, trusting, believing, waiting, trusting, believe him, waiting, trust him, believing, waiting. Period. <laughs> Period. That's why. That's why we have to do this. And when we come together every day in fellowship, iron sharpening iron. When we come together in fellowship every day, we're empowering each other. The reason we miss it when we can't come together is because we've gotten so used to coming together every day for years. Some of you OG1s, OG2s, OG3s, 4s. We've been together four years, some of you. But we come together six days a week, and we live the Word of God together. So when we miss it, it's like it's like you forgot to drink your water. It's like you forgot to eat your meal. I missed something today. I, I missed the fellowship. I missed the, I missed the praise. I missed the worship because we're now living it. We're doing it every day, six days a week. And remember Sabbath, keep it holy. We're living the word every day. So when you miss the word, you miss it because we've been doing the word six days a week together here and Sunday fellowship with, with the Lord. And so we're doing it seven days a week. That means you're living it. If you're connecting every day, you are living the word. If you're praying every day, you you you. If you're praying every day, he's there. Amen, Dan. And that's why you guys saw I I went on after we after yesterday, yesterday after we couldn't get on. I you guys probably saw it. I went on and re-recorded Worship Wednesday, a short version. Because remember, the devil tried to the devil tried to cancel 
worship with thee and part two of the lesson. Notice that the devil want to the, the devil want to cancel worship Wednesday and part two of Monday's lesson. So the way I did it, I recorded both praise and worship and the lesson yesterday. It's posted. I posted last night on the Facebook. So slap the devil. Yeah, devil, you try to connect disconnect us for two days. Guess what? <laughs> we're back <laughs> and we're still praising. The devil tried, but the devil lied. The devil tried, but the devil lied. He can't, he got no kind of hold on us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for this fellowship, Lord. Bless us, Lord, as we leave this place today, Lord. Bless each fellowship member, Lord, just to be able to take away the truth in the day's lesson, Lord. Help us to be able to just keep keep shouting and praising and living the word and shouting and using the word, apply the word, breathe the word, live the word. Help us, Lord, to be focused, Lord. Bless right now. Give us supernatural focus, Lord, to stay connected, to stay focused, to keep seeking, to keep asking, to keep knocking, Lord, to get a closer walk to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Right now, as we get ready to close, as we get ready to close, I'm going to the prayer of salvation. As always, as always, no typing right now as I go into prayer of salvation and closing prayers. Because I know someone's right now, someone's listening right now who does not understand our praise, our worship, our message. So as always, no typing until I finish the prayers. Anything typed during prayer time will be deleted. I respect the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right now, I'm talking to the person listening who's been listening the whole time. But you're not connected. You've been crying the entire two and a half hours. Your life is falling apart. Darkness, worry, fear, stress, negativity. You're overwhelmed right now. Yet somehow, you find yourself on this channel and you have no idea how you got here. That's because God brought you here. You're not here by accident. God brought you here to ease the pain and suffering you're going through emotionally, physically, or spiritually right now. You may be here as a backslider in guilt. For whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back into a world of sin. And now your life is falling apart. And the devil's lying to you and telling you once you fail God, you could never go back. And that right there is a lie for the pit of hell. No one is perfect. All have fallen short. So if you've been walking as a backslider in guilt and you want to come back to the Lord, just pray this prayer of salvation over again and there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. So whether you're walking in depression, fear and worry, or you're walking as a backslider and you want to come back to the Lord, pray with me right now. Repeat after me. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without living up to you first. Create in me, O Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that is not like you in Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is not right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come into your life and show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing darkness into your life. And then he'll tell you exactly what you need to do to reverse it. First of all, spend time with God every day. Feed your spirit, starve your flesh, feed your faith, starve your doubt every day, not just every Sunday, every day. The more time you spend with God every day, the more peace you'll feel in your life, which is God letting you know. It's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spirits of retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash, 
in every other demonic spirit, name the unnamed, seen the unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. We cast all you demonic spirits out of our mind, out of our spirit, out of our family, out of our kids, out of our marriages, back to the pit of hell from which you all came in Jesus' name. The Father God, loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship, loose unspeakable joy, loose peace beyond understanding, loose restoration, Lord, restore every area of our life, loose reconciliation, Lord, bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now struggling to survive because of the devil's attack, Lord. And Lord, please keep a hedge of protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, emotional healing, physical healing, spiritual healing. By your stripes, we were healed. And we confess it, Lord. We confess it every day. I believe I've received my healing in the name of Jesus. I believe I've received my healing in the name of Jesus every day. Live it, breathe it, see it, expect it, pray as if your life depends on it. P-U-S-H, pray until something happens. Loose, supernatural overflow, financial breakthrough, supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let, let your blessings, Lord, blessings of abundance rain down, Lord. Rain down on the fellowship every financial need, whatever it is, large or small, especially during these hard times of the pandemic, Lord. For you shall supply all our need according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want for anything when the Lord is my shepherd. For we're the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We're the lender and not the borrower. We're blessed going in and blessed going out. We're blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We are out of debt. All of our needs are met. We have plenty more to put in store. We are children of God. And nothing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way. And finally, Lord, we thank you for our miracle, Lord. Each fellowship member has a miracle in prayer for right now. And now we know, Lord, every day, spend time, see it. See your miracle. See it every day. See it. Visualize it. Believe it. Receive it in your heart. And once you receive it in your heart, expect it. Expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We will never know the exact when. But because we don't know when, that means any day you wake up could be a day of the manifestation of the miracle you're praying for right now. May the Lord bless you and keep your family. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. That you may be a blessing to everyone you touch and speak to, a blessing to everyone you pray over, a blessing to everyone you pass by and bless because the light of the Lord is all over you. 24 7, 365. So, Father God, all these things we ask, Lord, all these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the fellowship say amen. 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 Praise God.